Hi, this is Sabrina Marie Chase, or Sabrina Marie for short. Today I want to talk a little bit about my own background. I haven't really focused on that too much in these videos, but you might be curious as to what my background is, and it serves as an example of someone who has put together training from a lot of different places in order to be um, a reader at first and later a diviner. And then there are other things I do as well. So just in case you're curious, here's the video. So originally I began as a child um, in a household where my mother is Latina, Latin American, and she came from her own tradition of sort of a folk magic background combined with Catholicism. That's really common in Latin America where you have people who are very dedicated Catholics but who have inherited or learned various folk traditions from their families and my mother was certainly one of those people. So I grew up in a household in which it was reasonably common to see little folk magics practiced around me and I thought of that as pretty normal. And then she would bring in occasionally other friends, um, other Latino friends, um, who would also have that sort of magical background or magical realist background in terms of my mother was an academic and she was interested in Latino literature and magical realism is a very important part of that literature. So I started off in that direction and as I got older I knew very much in my adolescence that um, I was going to be both a scholar, an academic, and also a very active spiritual practitioner. So I read voraciously. I read voraciously in the social sciences, in the natural sciences. I had a lot of interest in archaeology, but I had a tremendous interest in diverse spiritual traditions. So I read across a lot of books that touched on spirituality, um, psychism, various kinds of um, new age approaches. I did a lot of reading. And as an adolescent, I guess I was a sophomore in high school, I bought my own tarot deck. And I really began practicing at that point. Divination is my core tool. It is my go-to tool. It's the tool that I know better than anything else except ritual and that I use in my practice. So I've practiced over many decades with many, many different decks. As I got a little older, I joined a Wiccan tradition, the Blue, tr Blue Star tradition of Wicca, which has been my home tradition and been a beautiful, fantastic place for me to nurture my abilities as a teacher and a healer and a priestess. So for a number of decades, I've been involved in the Blue Star tradition of Wicca, and that's where I learned really my second major path of power, which is ritual. I learned to enact, to design and to um, gift to communities and to people rituals. So I learned how to collaborate with other very talented priests and priestesses. And my favorite really was transformational ritual. Rituals that are rites of passage that help people move from one stage in their lives to another. So for a period of a couple decades, I really focused on that. And during this period, I really learned to love working with mid-level practitioners, the graduate students of spirituality, people who've been studying and practicing for a good while, who had done a fair amount of basic learning, but they were kind of in the middle of their learning as a, a, a student of spirituality and they needed a little more advanced guidance. So these were people often who were undergoing transformations of their own and these are the people that I've always loved to work with the most, the mid-level practitioners. And I spent a lot of years doing that and within the Blue Star tradition working with their rite of passage rituals and then creating new ones where that was possible. A little bit later, I began reaching outside my tradition of Wicca and I discovered Buddhist practice and Buddhism through the work of Pema Chodron. I fell in love. I loved Buddhist practice. I loved Pema Chodron's books. I began going to see her speak, going to retreats with her, and uh, that was a really important part of deepening my own personal, spiritual, day-to-day -day practice. So I began combining the spiritual practices I learned as a Wiccan priestess with the spiritual practices that I learned as a Buddhist practitioner and for me that was beautiful and per perfect really in helping me deepen my own spirituality, mature 
and my understanding and be able to offer the world more as a practitioner. And then some years after that, I encountered Caroline Kenner, uh, a shamanic healer uh, within a Wiccan contest, context who drew on many other spiritual traditions. And for a number of years, about three years, I entered a formal study with her, met wonderful, wonderful people through the Griffins Grove School of Shamanism. And that really opened up entirely new doors to me, entirely new doors. So this really added a tremendous depth to my practice and expanded my understanding. And uh, I guess there was another element, and that's when I began to work with priests, priestesses, healers, and practitioners of other traditions, where uh, there were a number of opportunities I had for long-term collaborations with groups of people who'd been trained as Gardnerians, Alexandrians, eclectics, um, many different traditions coming together. There was one particular opportunity I had for five years, where throughout that five years, I would work with a group of 25 other very experienced priests and priestesses to create a three-day transformational festival with workshops during the day and rituals at night, all of them linked, all of them designed to take the people who came, a small group of people, and move them through a transformational process to elevate them to their next level. That was an amazing experience and I learned a great deal. So for me, I have combined many years of training across a number of different traditions um, to be a person who, whose primary interest really is in working with mid-level practitioners who are seeking to figure out what their mission is as a healer, as a teacher, as a wisdom practitioner who can help the world in some way. So my passion is to help those people find their path and get the training they need to level up and move into whatever that is. And that is what I hope to be doing for the rest of my life. At the same time that I was doing all of this, I was going through the academic process, uh, earning a, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and finally a PhD in anthropology, specializing in medical anthropology, and surprise, discovering that I love to learn with graduate students, with mid-level practitioners, helping them move through their PhD program, master their material, master their dissertation topic, write a beautiful piece of original work, and graduate to be scholar activists themselves. So that's maybe more than you wanted to know about me and my background. I hope that it is in some way interesting or useful for you, and I absolutely want to encourage you to be very diverse in your training. If you get the opportunity to study with teachers you never imagined yourself studying with, working with people outside of the tradition that you're comfortable with, or expanding what you can do in interesting and kind of scary ways, as long as those people appear to be in integrity, honest, kind, compassionate, caring, and truthful, I encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone and do it because every time I stepped outside my comfort zone, every time I got a new piece of training, it profoundly expanded what I can do as a teacher and a healer. So if you take anything away from this, I hope it's this. Take chances as long as those chances are taken with people you can trust. Try something new. Reach for more. Never be afraid to level up. Thank you so much.